welcome back guys so it's another miserable day it's going to be raining all the time on and off it's really cold as well uh, but that's what you get for winter so now that um, we've got all this bed framing done in the aft cabin this week i'm going to try and finish off a lot of the welding uh, i've done a lot of inserting plates uh, and replacing bits of metal on the deck um, and we still need to do the inside welding um, all along these hatches um, and I've got this replacement piece that I've put up here uh, so yeah just got a few bits to finish off this week I don't like overhead welding it's one of the hardest ones that I find to weld so I'm gonna give it a go I'm gonna try doing it with stick um, because I have a lot of leftover sticks and we're starting to run out of things to weld so I want to use up a bit more weld uh, welding rods instead of using up all the MIG wire and gas. Um, gas is pretty expensive so we'll use those uh, arc welding rods and i would see how I go. I'm not, not the best overhead welder so wish me luck. One of the troubles I had last time was basically up here trying to weld with no support and you know your arms just get tired and you start shaking a lot and you lose your arc length. It's a little bit of an annoyance. So what I'm going to do this time is I've got this bit of wood. I'm going to put my elbow on the wood and find where I'm going to weld and then I'm going to use the wood to steady my arms so that they don't start shaking. So, a little bit of a tip, yeah, just grab any sort of uh, prop that you can and use it to guide you while you're welding. Uh, let's see if it makes my welds any better. So we've got some nice beads there overhead. GoPro never really gets it to come out nice. So I could probably turn the heat down a little bit more. We've got a bit of undercut on that 10 mil plate. Um, but other than that, it's pretty good. I managed to weld up all of this and there's a plate that was in there that's all been welded up and another plate that goes down that's all welded up. So this room's just about done um, and I might just above the doorways here we've got to fill in this little slip here. Otherwise that door frame is just not going to be strong enough. So I'm going to cut a piece out for that and weld those in.
All right, good news is, I believe all the hot works in the aft cabin here is done. So, nice bread frame. I found this piece of wood and just cut it to suit. Um, I'll just put that there because it looks nice. So, that, that's just a nice little step to help me sort of get up onto the bed if I need to. Uh, but yeah, all the welding's done. So I've gone around here, done that, um, done all the welding across this whole hatch and done this welding around this insert piece. That was a bit of galvanized steel. I wanted actual steel put in, which is good. I welded up these door frames. There's heaps of weld on there, I went a bit nuts. So I had to grind some of it off, but nice and solid now. And this other door frame's done. So nice and solid doors. So yeah, this is basically all done, ready for blast and paint now. So which is great news. I don't have to do any more work in this aft cabin. Um, basically all the welding is done and we'll blast it and start lining and do doing all that when we're ready to do the rest of the boat. But yeah, exciting that all the majority of the work in this room is done. Righty, so we have been discussing a little bit about this bilge and where the bilge pump should go or the outlet for the bilge pump should go. A couple of the decisions that we were looking at was in the kitchen, just above here. We're gonna put um, an outlet. And then the other one was back over here in the wardrobe, because that's an easier to access area. And yeah, I put those two options out. Uh, a lot of people commented and gave me a third option, and that's running a line all the way aft. And originally I was thinking, that's probably not gonna work, because the bilge pump's only, um, it's what, 4,000 litres an hour. And the head of water from here to there is nearly eight metres long. That's a fair head of water uh, for just this little bilge pump to be able to push out. And this one here would be two metres, and that one would be two and a half to three metres. Um, so we're looking at a drop for these two to about 3,000 litres an hour, where the other one would probably nearly half it to probably two and a half to 2,900 litres an hour instead of the 4,000. Uh, so originally I was discontinuing that idea, uh, but thinking about it, I don't need to use the 4,000 litres an hour one. Um, I might do um, by going and getting a sump pump, a 240 volt sump pump and using that as my bilge pump. And we we'll might have that 4,000 litres an hour one um, just as a, a backup bilge pump, um, as a 24 volt bilge pump. So with that being said, I can get a 10,000 litre an hour um, sump pump and I can run it all the way aft because uh, you know, it's the head of water is not going to be an issue for that 240 volt bilge pump. Um, so with that being said, I think we will end up uh, running that line aft um, because that, that's a long way for just a, a small bilge pump to be running. Alright, first things first with this bilge pump, I need to plasma cut in a few holes down into the keel. So, I'm going to just open up a bit of an arch on both sides of these uh, bilges, so I can run the pipe all the way from the forward bilge, just run it parallel down the side of this, this bilge here, and then it will pop up out the bottom here and into the aft cabin and out the back. So I don't wanna run it up out of the bilge and through the whole flooring and everything. It would be just nice if it just, nice straight line through the bilge and then pops up when the bilge finishes and then head straight out.
Well, that worked out well. Plasma cut up, a little arch in there, and one there. So we'll feed the bilge pump line through those two holes, running parallel with the side, and that will be nice and neat. And now we're just going to pin down some uh, little hose clamps to just keep it retained and so it doesn't flop around everywhere. So we'll go get those hose clamps and see how we go fitting them. Excuse the mess, but we've got the hose coming through that hole we plasma cut in the side there. It comes, it will come and be retained underneath the floor. We're going to come underneath the stiffener and underneath the stop for steering. Keeps it nice and neat. It would be slightly off the stringer, but so we're going to run parallel, nice and straight with that stringer. We're going to now have to plasma cut a hole through this so that we can get that hose to go straight through, which would be nice. Continuing up the half cabin, we're basically going to go straight out the side of that rear bulkhead. So that's um, where we're going, just one more hole to make. So the last thing now is to drill the hole in the aft bulkhead. Well, I've got all the bilge pumps sorted. All the bilge line is all run. I'm not gonna clamp it down just yet because it's just dry fitted at the moment. Um, everything's gonna be taken off when we go and blast the paint inside the boat here. I do have a couple of these check valves to put on. However, I'm not gonna do that just yet until everything's fitted. So I'm gonna put two in, one right by the end so that you know, if this, uh, the back end dips into the water, uh, water's not gonna come in. And also, I'll put one down in the bilge, um, and that one's to stop the head of water. We've got like six or seven meters of, uh, of hose going up here. Once you empty your bilge, and then all the water's full in here, you don't want that whole head of water to drain back into your bilge. And if it's enough water, it may even just turn the bilge on. What's gonna happen is the bilge is gonna turn on, um, it's going to get that head of water up and then it's going to turn off. That's going to go back down in the bilge and turn back on again. So I'm going to run the two check valves, you know, it's an extra 20 bucks. It's going to stop a lot of headaches uh, just hearing that on off on off problem. So that's done. All right, that's great. We managed to get all the welding done in the aft cabin. So uh, all the studs are welded in for the bilge pump all the bed frames done i even did the overhead welding uh, there's a few plates that needed welding and we got the door frames done uh, so that's a bonus too so that aft cabin is basically now ready for blast and paint which is amazing because like it's going to be a big transformation as soon as we can start ripping off all that dirt all that um, grime and loose paint and rust and we can get that nice white um, inside paint on so exciting times coming forward uh, yeah it's getting closer closer to what we want so yeah stay tuned and hopefully everyone's on board when we can actually show you a pretty beautiful clean boat so yeah let me know what you guys saw about the episode and um, yeah leave a comment a like and hopefully we'll see you all next week thanks guys mm -hmm.